Hey guys, trying something new today. I'm gonna do a little coffee chat with the homeschool parents out there. And I guess really this is geared toward homeschool moms because today's topic is mom guilt. Now I'm not saying dads can't have guilt. I'm sure they do, but I do think there's something especially common, I guess it is, or especially intense about mom guilt. And I've always said that homeschooling is like parenting on steroids because you're always with your kids and you're the primary influence on their behavior and their education and everything. And so it makes parenting more intense. And so homeschool mom guilt is a very real thing. I mean, I've experienced it. Um, I've, I've experienced it today, in fact, which is why I wanted to talk about this. And I've got friends that are constantly talking about it and are experiencing that as well. So I am betting if you're a mom, and especially if you're a homeschool mom, you have experienced mom guilt. And this year, being pandemic year, 2020, um, a lot of parents were kind of homeschooling parents. So I'm sure a lot of parents can identify with what I'm going to talk about today. So mom guilt. Um, Today, I was thinking about it because my son had a birthday a few days ago, and this year was especially hard because we can't really do anything with a big group. We can't do anything inside. A lot of places are closed. So I didn't know what to do. And I had finally decided, okay, I'm going to plan this thing at a local orchard. A friend of mine recommended it, and I would just like bake a cookie cake and take that, and it'd be great. So I had it all planned for this Sunday. And then I thought I probably should call the orchard and make sure that everything was going to work out and found out they closed their last day is this Saturday. And then they're closed for the year. So back to square one on that one. I felt bad because I, I didn't make his birthday special and he was turning 10. Like that seems kind of like a big deal, double digits. And I wanted it to be special. And then I felt like I failed and so all that guilt started coming up today. And I also realized that as a homeschool mom, I have a lot of guilt all the time. I mean, from the time I first started homeschooling, the first thing I felt guilt about was trying to figure out how the heck I was going to do this homeschool thing. And I started reading what other people did and I watched YouTube videos and I read blogs and I posted on Facebook and talked to other moms about what they were doing. And it all sounded great. And I would read what one person was doing and I'd think, oh, that's what I should do. I'm going to do exactly what they're doing. But it wasn't always right for me. I always felt like it wasn't the right balance and either they weren't free to play enough or um, they weren't developing enough love of learning or they weren't learning enough, um, maybe Latin or math or writing skills or whatever it was. And so I would go back and forth and back and forth. And I found that the more stressed I became, the more my kids resisted doing school and the more they whined and the more they complained about it. So I don't know. I mean, I don't have a perfect solution still. I don't think anybody does. But one thing I've noticed is that the way I feel and like my attitude and my um, mindset for the day really does seem to influence my children's. So if I'm feeling stressed and anxious and like, oh my gosh, we've got to really catch up on our schoolwork and we've got to work so hard today, they push back more. And so it has the opposite effect. And the more I can just relax and kind of go with the flow to a certain extent and be more joyful about what we're doing and more interested and excited about it and come at it from more of a curiosity kind of mindset, like, huh, I'm really curious, what do we think of this? And what are we going to learn? And this is really interesting. And, and that kind of thing, the more I can kind of have that mindset, the more my kids do too. So I'm not at all trying to give you anything else to feel guilty about or to stress over. I'm not saying do something different. I'm just saying try to relax a little bit and don't give in to the worry and guilt because that doesn't help. And the other big thing is take care of yourself. Like seriously, put yourself first. That's something moms never do. I mean, I know I rarely do it and I try to because I've learned that 
when I take that time for myself, everything gets better. So like right now, um, my kids are downstairs watching cartoons and um, I'm up here having a cup of coffee with you and I don't feel guilty about it because I know that this is what I needed. I needed to take a break and they're happy. And when I'm done, they'll be happy to do something else and be more willing to do what I want them to do because they've had a break. So I'm taking the time for myself. So do what makes you happy. Do what you need to do to keep yourself mentally happy. I mean, now more than ever in this crazy year of 2020 with the pandemic and everything, we're all stressed and we're all going through so much anxiety and uncertainty. So do what you can to take care of yourself. Like take a bath, drink that cup of coffee and, or tea or whatever it is and just take a moment for yourself. Go for a walk. Um, do all those things to make sure you, that you're in a good mental place. And that will help tremendously, I think, with your kids as well. And let's stop the mom guilt. I mean, seriously, we have got to, as moms, get together, support each other. We shouldn't be feeling guilty all the time. And one thing I just want to add as far as that goes, I think one thing that brings up more guilt than anything is when we go on social media and we see all the cool things the other moms are doing, and then we start comparing ourselves and our homeschools and our kids, and we think, oh, you know, I can't do that. My kid's not doing that or you know, whatever it is, we feel bad. And I've been blessed to have a few friends recently who have really been open about the bad things in their lives and the days that don't go well. And that has been so helpful because honestly, nobody has all good days. Nobody has it all together and nobody's perfect. But what we show on social media usually are the good things and the days that went right and the days that went well. But that may be just a few days out of the week. It may not be every day. Most likely it's not every day. And so we're comparing our real lives, everything about them that we know, the good and the bad. We're comparing that to that exterior that people showed everybody. It's like they put on their makeup and we're comparing that to ourselves with no makeup just rolled out of bed. And you just can't do that because it's always going to be negative. You're always, always going to feel like you're not as good as those other people when you do that. So, you know, they've had some campaigns recently of like, show the world what your face really looks like without makeup and all that kind of thing. I think maybe as moms, we need to start showing the world and each other the real life. Like, you know, you have a bad day and your kids were whiny and didn't do school all day. Admit it. Like, it's okay. It's in our minds that we're so stressed over it and that we're so convinced we have to convince everyone else that we're perfect. And the more we try to do that, the more it just puts pressure on everybody. So realize nobody's perfect. Be yourself, be honest, and just try to enjoy the journey. If you'd like to learn more about my business, Confidently Homeschool, go to www.confidentlyhomeschool.com. I have a blog on there with various resources, tips, ideas, and some real world examples of our homeschool. And you can find all that at confidentlyhomeschool.com slash blog. I will be back again for another coffee chat next week.